okay uh, hello everyone uh, my name is mukul and i'll uh, will be talking about uh, apache ozone in the talk today and i i am here with my friend rakesh radhakrishnan and we'll be talking about how we made changes to ozone to support multiple protocols on ozone so let's quickly discuss our, uh, our agenda so we'll be talking about ozone architecture then we'll talk about various interfaces using which uh, uh, users can talk to ozone and then talk about the proposed design where we provide a unified design using which files directory and objects can all be represented in ozone and then we would go further go ahead and discuss the use cases talk about a little bit more in detail of design consideration uh, then and then talk about a couple of features which came out of this so let's start with the ozone architecture uh, i mean uh, i'll start by giving a basic intro about ozone ozone is a is an object store which we have designed and uh, one of the purposes of designing ozone was to make sure we design an object store which was highly scalable and in our internal testing we have been able to uh, already uh, have more than 10 billion objects in ozone and ozone has proved out to be a storage system which can really store a large number of objects and we have also seen that uh, that this is an object store which uh, our customers can also use and migrate uh, and basically this would help them overcome their scalability problem with hdss so uh, in ozone architecture we have ozone manager which is the namespace layer then we have the storage container manager which is the block space layer and it also takes care of things like node membership cluster cluster management part of it at the bottom we have the data nodes and uh, on the right of it we have the recon server recon server is our uh, admin utility and all of these uh, four uh, components which i talked to you about makes up our daemon uh, processes which are running inside ozone on the left of part of uh, of this diagram we have the user access methods and Uh, the most common user access methods which we have got is uh, let's start from the top where we have the ozone file system connector and ozone file system connector is a hadoop compatible file system using which applications like hive spark and yarn would be talking to ozone then we have got the cli shell uh, a cli shell is something which is which has been designed by ozone developers as ozone was getting developed to help them debug uh, issues but also i mean it is completely feature rich and it lets you perform all of the ozone operation the next thing which we have got in here is the s3 uh, gateway servers and uh, uh, what we uh, the purpose of s3 gateway servers is to provide an s3 access endpoint where we would be supporting the amazon s3 protocol for any users to access uh, ozone uh, using the amazon s3 rest protocol yeah let's let go down a little bit further right i mean what how does all of this really work out in this scheme of things right yeah. so in uh, in any cluster right i mean storage is not used in isolation there is always other uh, applications which are running on top of it and that's what we have gone got on the right right i mean you have things like hive spark flink uh, also we can have things like kafka and uh, and other component map reduce yarn in here right and uh, uh, so so the most common uh, storage uh, access pattern that we have seen is using the ofs protocol which is basically the hadoop compatible file system using which user access ozone and uh, and also the user can access also access ozone using the s3a protocol and the s3a protocol is the protocol using which uh, a uh, user can actually read write data using their big data application where the data gets directed to to <clears throat> directed to the s3 gateway no zone and the data gets written there and uh, uh, another thing which we are also working on is support for adding vs dfs layer and with this uh, we are adding uh, support in the vfs mount table where users would be able to spe specify ozone paths Uh, for uh, i mean for a given file path they would be able to specify that the file resides on ozone uh, the uh, um, what we also have on the left now if we would see 
is also ingestion which happens purely via S3. And this would happen either via the AWS S3 CLI, the Boto Python client, which Amazon provides, or the S3, uh, S3 uh, REST command, which would come to us directly. And uh, on the top uh, also, right, I mean, Ozone can also be accessed via the S3 browser. So uh, we have also embedded the Ozone S3 browser in our code. If you'll go to the S3 gateway endpoint, you should be able to browse one particular Ozone bucket. And uh, then we have got the cube containers. And the Kubernetes containers can also access Ozone using the S3 protocol as well. And we have also added support for uh, uh, Kubernetes containers can also access Ozone using Goofies as a protocol. Uh, we'll share some of those details later on. Um, before I would start with this slide, I mean, I would also would like to recap that uh, the two most prominent access patterns which we see in our system is using the S3 protocol or using the, uh, the OFS or the file system client. And these are really the two use cases which are the most important use cases for us and what we have really been trying to optimize for, right? Uh, talking to our customers, we have really identified that there are really two really important use cases which our customers have been targeting Ozone for. Uh, the most uh, obvious and most common use case is really using Ozone as, an, as a replacement for HDFS where HDFS currently runs into scalability problems and uh, uh, where it cannot scale beyond 250 million files. And uh, as I've already told, Ozone with 10 billion objects already provides a 40x uh, scalability uh, limit, which is greater than Ozone, right? Then uh, the new uh, kind of use case which we are seeing also is around using Ozone as a pure object store. And in here, uh, users would be using Ozone as a complete object store with no notions of files and directories. Everything is in a flat namespace. Um, there is no hierarchical namespace really, right? And the third use case is where, uh, where a user may be able to pump in data via the S3 API, but then provide uh, run map reduce jobs on top of it, right? So this is what we call as the multi-protocol layer, where a user would be able to ingest data using one of the protocol, and then read or write back to it using another protocol. Now, we'll be going into some of these details very deeply in the stock, really. Uh, one of the other points which I also would like to mention before we move ahead is that we have designed Ozone to be extensible, and we also feel that we can uh, extend Ozone to support future protocols like NFS or CSI or, or I mean, anything new which comes up. We have designed the protocol layer and the actual data path to be separate from each other. And we uh, we feel that we should be able to support any future protocols as well. Okay, so now let's, I mean, let's bring it all together, right? And let's imagine how does a modern data center architecture looks like. So in, in a modern data center architecture, customers or users are running a bunch of big data applications and this would, always include things like Hive, Spark, MapReduce, Impala. But I mean, you can also have other components which we may have missed here like Kafka and some of these other things. And all of these access storage via a common API. And this is what we call as the Hadoop Common File System API. Uh, this Hadoop Common File System API is very similar to Fuse file system layer in the regular uh, Linux like file system. And this provides a very uh, uh, I mean, it provides a standard API using which the application can talk to storage. Now here, uh, I mean, uh, on, on the bottom, we have a bunch of storage services which are there, right? So you have things like HDFS, which has always been around for some time. I, I just talked about Ozone and how the OFS protocol can also be used with Ozone. But uh, now with the advent of new um, cloud storages, uh, users also uh, have a mix of on-premise storage as well as on-cloud storage, right? So the Hadoop compatible file system allows users to access the data using the same API, using things like the WASB connector or the S3A connector. Now, uh, we, we talked about how this really looks like, but uh, the next uh, really big part of this also is that, uh, that apart from Ozone, there are a bunch of other S3 compatible object store. To name a few, right? I mean, we have Minio, Ceph, 
Ozone obviously supports both the file system as well as the S3 API. So uh, uh, users would also be able to access Ozone via the S3 connector, which is now rather than talking to Amazon S3, would now be talking to uh, Apache or Boundary. At the bottom, what we have also got is the CSI layer. And the CSI layer is, is currently uh, a very important layer in the whole uh, cloud native environment where CSI provides uh, containers, CSI stands for Container Storage Interface. And this is a pattern using which uh, uh, containers consume storage. Uh, as I told you already, uh, Ozone can provide CSI compatibility using Goofies as a protocol. But I mean, we do see that, uh, that CSI becoming a really important uh, part of the whole storage ecospace uh, in a real modern data center. So uh, this is what uh, where I just talked about the basic architecture and the use cases. My friend Rakesh would now be talking about how we des uh, designed the system to store both files and objects. Over to you, Rakesh. Yeah, hey, uh, thanks, Mughal, for the uh, the introduction part and, and covering most of the use cases sections. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, some of the architectural elements and design con considerations and and the uh, the enhancements we have done so far to to incorporate both files and objects in the into the ozone cluster so uh, we'll we'll talk about how should a single unified design represents uh, let's say we have files directories objects and buckets in place right how how it looks like so underneath you have a data in place and uh, the same data can be represented in various ways right various uh, namespace fashion. So here, left hand side, you can see the file system hierarchical namespace. So here, everything is in the in the parent-child relationship, right? You have uh, directories in place, and uh, under the directories, you have files, millions of files you can add. And on the right hand side, you can see the objects store or the key-value store, right? Where we will will be having a flat namespace. And here, the same thing. Let's say if I represent the same file in the flat namespace, we'll be having the complete path, absolute path kind of thing, right? Directory one slash, directory two slash, three slash, five one. This is how the uh, the the way how a hierarchical namespace and flat namespace represents. Now we'll we'll take into the some of the details of, of the HCFS files. So when you look at the HCFS uh, contract, uh, we have applications or we have big data tools like Apache Hive, Apache Impala, uh, spark and various tools right so here one of the the contract expects is like it 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 expects a strong consistency without any partial failures let's say i'm dropping a table impala table or a hive uh, table i'm dropping so it comprises of a lot of files and when i do a delete or a dropping a table it has to clean up all these files completely the, without any partial failures there can be intermittent uh, failures of uh, network network uh, lows, packet lows, or those kind of uh, or the client drop off, those kind of things can come up in between, right? So one of the clear expectations is like it has to be strongly consistent without any partial results. And the second thing is like uh, on the, the performance. When I drop a table, it has to finish the operations in a deterministic time frame. Let's say you have a table with a uh, thousand million records or or 100 million records so when i do a dropping a table it has to complete in a deterministic time it should not take like all one by file it has to fetch and clean up all the things so that is the second aspect and the third aspect is like when you take about the hive impala spark or the typical map reduce uh, jobs all these will generate when you run a workload all these will generate a temporary files output files and finally the job committers will rename those files into a single output location so the performance of the job will be directly impacted by the way how how quickly the rename operation is completed so basically there are two operations which are involved one is a delete operation and a rename operation which are a, a speciality for the hadoop compatible file system now we'll, we'll take you through the design considerations when you talk about the hierarchical file system namespace it represents intermediate directories similar to the hdfs 
and uh, HDFS, of course, it provides atomic rename and deletes. So every every uh, tools, big data tools, will expect Ozone to be uh, respecting the uh, Ozone to be Ozone to support the atomic rename and delete operations. And of course, uh, when we when you when you when you are bringing a new system or when you are providing a Ozone file system semantics, of course, it will compare it will get compared with HDFS. So it has to be. Uh, completed the recursive operations rename uh, recursive delete move operations it has to be completed in a deterministic performance uh, time frame and the third one uh, like mughal mentioned there are expectations about the interoperability of the same data i have represented the data in the ozone uh, the the, the da da data can be uh, the data can be feed into the ozone using nifi or some kind of tools and through the s3 protocols and the right hand side uh, we'll, we'll have the big data tools. They'll operate uh, performing batch operations, those kind of things through the SCFS file system. So we'll see those in details in the next slides. Yeah, we have introduced a concept of bucket types. Uh, when we talk about bucket types, uh, it, it is basically a directly proportional to the use cases. So we have seen a couple of use cases like file system optimized object store use cases, right? So now, we have introduced this ozone bucket, uh, which laid down the path uh, to 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 make or to add more sophisticated features on top of the ozone, and it clear clearly provides isolation uh, between the workloads or between the user operations. Let's say if user is performing file system optimized buckets, and th those can be clearly isolated with the object store buckets, so both can coexist into the same ozone cluster. And legacy is introduced to to represent the pre-created buckets. When when we are introducing a bucket types in the new version, uh, so what happens is like there are buckets created in the cluster. So those buckets will be translated into legacy buckets, and those pre-created buckets uh, are termed as legacy for smooth upgradation. So another important aspect what we put forward is like all these bucket types or the bucket layouts can be defined by the clients. So ozone manager is a single cluster where it represents multiple bucket types, right? So now when I'm creating a bucket, when user is creating a bucket, he can define what is the type of the bucket. So it is completely owned by the, the clients. So uh, when we talk about the NFS, uh, Mukul was talking about the NFS or a new protocols, right? So here probably we can these bucket types will help more isolation. For example, user want to uh, perform NFS operations. Uh, we can introduce a new uh, bucket types, or we can enhance the bucket types to to support NFS or other other set of operations. So this is how the the client when client is going to create a bucket, client will say that what is the bucket type? Uh, bucket type can be FSO, OBS, or legacy. All these buckets can be created into the Ozone Manager, and Ozone Manager has bucket table, and bucket table is backed up with the RocksDB. Okay, this is how the the command Ozone shell command. When you are creating a bucket, you you can specify what is the layout, file system optimized object store legacy. Okay, now we'll we'll talk about the file system optimization what we have done uh, some time back. So it, it brings uh, an easy migration of workload from uh, from HDFS to Ozone. Let's say I have uh, a workload which uh, gives a significant performance with the uh, HDFS. The same workload can be migrated to HDFS without losing uh, much performance degradation. Uh, and uh, the mainly these two operations, the rename and delete operations, which are prohibitively expensive uh, operations in terms of the object store world, but uh, with the file system opt optimizations, what we have implemented is like we have implemented uh, order of one complexity uh, performance optimizations and without worrying about the underlying subpaths or subtrees. So we'll, we'll see more into the next slides, coming slides. Yeah, so this is how the files and objects organized in Ozone Manager. So we have two different layouts in place, object store and file system optimized. And in the object store, we, for example, I'm creating a path directory one, directory two, directory three, and key one. And let's say if I want to uh, call directory one as a, a key, 
you will be creating a key entry like this and then directory two and directory three and finally key one so this is how uh, directories and and a trailing slash will represent the directories and uh, and a flat uh, path will represent the file so now coming to the file system optimized here we have a dedicated tables directory table and file table so here it is backed up with a prefix ids so we will not have the complete absolute path of the file or directory path when i am creating a file what we do is like we will be using the the prefix id of the the bucket basically the object id of the bucket which is for example let's say it is 512 512 slash directory one and which has an object id in place and using the object id uh, we will be creating the next subdirectory directory two and directory two has an object id 1025 using that we'll create in the directory three and we have uh, all the files put into a file table separately so now we have two entities in place in the ozone manager one is a directory table and another one is a file table two other represents the complete fs file system namespace let's say if i want to traverse a directory uh, one elements or subpath components what it will do is like it will fetch the entry from the directory table and then find out the subpaths and then find out the next subpath and then move on to the file table and then list so list is obviously a costly operation so it has to do a top down traversal so in the other other side listing is pretty easy because everything is is like in the flat structure but here it has to do a like a top down traversal in the file system optimized okay now we'll, we'll talk about the interoperability of the data so this is one of the uh, the the very significant use case uh, some, some of our customers uh, were asking so that there is only single data into the cluster right so let's say i'm i'm creating uh, key one which has uh, gbs of data content and i'll be putting into the ozone cluster through the aws s3 client using the s3 protocol and now the same data without any any duplication or without any replication uh, i can make use of the same data using the ozone file system client and run any batch jobs like hive queries or or batch operations i can perform using the same data so traditionally what happens is like when i am trying to access the data you have to copy the data to some other cluster and then run it so with this uh, architectural element what the flexibility ozone is providing or the enhancement uh, uh, ozone is providing is like it user can talk to the ozone cluster using various protocol and the data is the same so no need to copy the data to various places Yeah, we'll see the the internal how we we achieve this. So here, left hand side, you can see ozone client. When somebody is creating a bucket, they will be saying what is the bucket type. So obviously, the uh, for the for supporting the interoperability, user has to create an FSO bucket, a file system optimized bucket. So the uh, file system optimized bucket has both the views. Uh, user can access uh, through the s3 client on the right hand side uh, in this picture in the right hand side you can see the file system client so here uh, all the operations all the operations and all the keys uh, will be translated into these two tables directory table and file table and the same uh, file can be accessed using the s3 client he can create a new file or he can uh, delete the same file on the right hand side you can see the ozone fs client which is hcfs compatible client so here the same data can be accessed using the uh, the the same interface the cfs interface and we are respecting the the range rackles so what happens is like when somebody is trying to to delete or uh, performing a rename operations it has to look up the all the subparts and ranger policies uh, and everything so we have an intelligent system in place and we we have done uh, some kind of optimizations in the range rackles and all the things will get abstracted and we do uh, a fraction of second fraction of milliseconds all the ranger policies and and we'll we'll find out whether the permission is is uh, is allowed to to perform the delete or rename operations okay and on top of the bucket uh, type there are a uh, few uh, few features we are bringing up and one of the important highlight feature is like we are adding a bucket lock uh, optimization so what happens is the existing ozone cluster ozone cluster has uh, sorry existing ozone manager ozone manager has a global bucket lock 
so when, let's say when now whenever a client is going to create a key key one uh, under the directory one slash directory two slash key one what happens is like uh, the the keys will be put into the bucket uh, like sorry uh, the, the keys will be put into the uh, under the bucket one and will be acquiring a global bucket lock and then the another client which is he is trying to read uh, a separate uh, key like a different key key n and which is under the same bucket one right so it has to wait for the uh, so since we have the re and run lock in place there there won't be issues with the reads let's say if i have a write comes into the picture let's say some of the client which is trying to create a, a new key which is under a different uh, path right so now what happens is like when i'm trying to create a key the global bucket lock will get acquired so now what happens is like all the readers uh, will get condensed so uh, the re readers will not be able to get the lock and all the read operations will get uh, impacted seriously and same as like if i am having n number of write operations if i am performing n number of write operations seriously uh, the performance will will get uh, impacted uh, drastically this is one of the common problem in the ozone in, in hdfs there is a fs namespace bucket lock similarly here uh, we have a bucket lock in the ozone manager as well so what we have done is like we have introduced a fine grained key path lock so what happens is like when somebody is trying to access or trying to create a disjoint paths for example i am i am creating a, a key one under directory 1 slash 2 slash 3 slash key one which is under the bucket one this path is completely owned by a lock key path lock and when i am creating a different key key n that is a disjoint path so the, the lock can be uh, completely dis occupied in, in that particular client so we no need to wait for uh, basically the the underlying rule is like the disjoint path can be op operated per independently without sharing the locks so this uh, provides a significant performance gain in our system okay and uh, we have a, a couple of uh, items pipeline in the roadmap so one is basically the, for the faster loop like i mentioned the traversal part right when i do a traversing with uh, n levels of directories you have to fetch the directories one by one and uh, and then traverse top down mechanism right uh, top, top down traversal mechanism you have to bring in so what we are planning is like uh, we are planning to cache the directory either it can be uh, using a rocks db of heap cache or it can be a separate entity those are under discussion and uh, we are planning to enhance the lock management to the file system optimized bucket as well mm -hmm. uh, earlier we saw the bucket types uh, or oh, checks bucket type uh, how, how can we enhance it and uh, how do we achieve a performance gain similarly the file system optimized bucket can also leverage the same key path lock to the hierarchical uh, the prefix prefix id is manner so this is under design and uh, we have a very very large community and uh, some of our contributors are, are continuously enhancing the features and adding more features on top of the bucket types uh, for example the snapshot is another feature which is coming up and uh, the the trash replication features all those has been built on top of uh, the the bucket types and uh, we have a very vibrant community uh, and uh, please please uh, drop a mail and talk to the members yeah thanks thanks everyone welcome all contributions thank you okay. thank you everyone